Right. I would like to inform the nation that uh, last night, around 22 hours, the Honorable Member of Parliament for Petaoke, JJ Banda, who is in our custody at the Chipata Correctional Service, has escaped from love custody. I would like to inform the nation that uh, at around 22 hours, as I indicated earlier, yesterday, Mr. J.J. Banda, who is facing aggravated robbery charges, escaped from love custody. Honorable J.J. Banda was taken to the hospital, Chipata General Hospital, on the 1st of August, 2024, in order to be attended to by the medical authorities there. You may be aware that uh, Honorable J.J. Banda has a history of suffering from hernia. As a result of the hernia complications, he was taken to the hospital on the 1st of August. On the 1st of August, he was attended to by medical doctors. A minor operation was conducted on him in order to to cure or remove or make amends pertaining to the hernia which he had. While he's in hospital, he was being advised by medical authorities that uh, he had to go in on a sort therapy where in in the afternoon and in the evenings the family had to put water in a bucket or a tub and you sit in in the tub in order to heal or assist in the healing process. Yesterday in the evening on the 4th of August at around 18 hours two police officers and the three Correctional officers were guarding him as a routine. At about 21 hours, the police officers were requested, I repeat, the police officers were requested by J.J. Banda's wife, going by the name of Lombe Charlie Banda age 31, that they wanted privacy for JJ Banda wanted to use the toilet and also to apply the directions by the medical doctors that he had to submerge in salt water. As I indicated, the two police officers who were in the room together with J.J. Banda's wife acceded to the request that he be given privacy to use the toilet and undergo the routine submission in salt water. After that process was done, the wife called the officers to get back to the room where JJ Banda was supposed to be. Unfortunately, unfortunately, when the officers went back to the room where JJ Banda was left 
with the wife. JJ Banda was not in the room. <clears throat> Preliminary investigations that have been done by the officers there who are guarding him is that he went out of the room through the window. He escaped from love custody using the window of the hospital. How he did it is a matter that is still under investigation. The Zambia Police Service and other security wings have launched a manhunt for the fugitive JJ Banda. As you may be aware, Honorable JJ Banda was committed to the High Court for trial for aggravated robbery. And because that matter is not bailable, he remained in the custody of the Zambia Correctional Service. Even when he escaped yesterday, he was under the custody of the Zambia Correctional Service. As I did indicate, on that fateful day, he was guarded by three Zambia Correction Service officers and two Zambia Police Service officers. In total, five security officers were supposed to be guarding JJ Banda. Despite these measures that were put in place, he managed to escape from law of custody. Investigations are going on over this matter. As I delve into this issue and discuss this issue, I would like to tell the nation that the PF have been driving a narrative and they have even shown as reported the exhibits of J.J. Banda, wherein they were showing pictures of J.J. Banda having been amputated. You are members of the press, I think you may have seen that. The Facebook page of uh, the, the media chairman, Mr. Emmanuel Mwamba, was awash with all those allegations. As if that was not enough, the former president of the Republic of Zambia, Mr. Ediga Chagwalungu, posted yesterday on his Facebook page, wherein he made malicious and preposterous accusations against the current president, Mr. Againdi Hijilem. And he informed the nation and the world that uh, President Hijilema shall be held accountable in the event that J.J. Banda dies. According to him, J.J. Banda, from the time he was taken into custody, he has always been in chains, including when he was in hospital. He was in chains. He was being tortured by this government. The question that begs an answer is this. How did J.J. Banda escape from love custody if he was under chains? How? How did he escape from love custody? 
How did JJ Banda escape from love custody if his leg was amputated as alleged? How did he do that? How possible was it that JJ Banda, while he's still in hospital, was able to undergo the procedure of submerging himself in salt water if he was under chains? How possible, how possible is it that JJ Banda? If he was in chains, he was able to jump through the window. Or whichever means you used to do to go out of the room through the window, if he was in chains. What we have noted is that there is a narrative that is being that was being driven by the PF over this matter as if it was a precursor to the escape of J.J. Bad. As far as the Zambia Correctional Service and Zambia Police Service who were guarding J.J. Banda in the hospital, he was never changed. He was treated humanely. The wives of J.J. Banda were always by his side. And there was no complaint of JJ Banda being changed in any way. It is very unfortunate. It is extremely unfortunate that senior members, and especially somebody who held high office in this country, can make such preposterous and malicious accusations inciting members of the public to rise against President Hakainde. As I indicated, there is a matter that is in court in Chipata, the issue of aggravated robbery, which may, you members of the public and especially yourselves members of the press are aware of. The, the person who was a victim of the aggravated robbery wherein J.J. Banda is appearing is a member of your fraternity. We have noted that most of the articles that are being written, they are being written in support of J.J. Banda. How about that victim? The journalist who was robbed in the course of duty in Vugui, who was robbed, according to the report, the journalist filed before the police. How about the journalist who was urinated in the mouth? Has he got no rights? Just like the Honorable J.J. Banda? Is it because he's just an ordinary journalist and J.J. Banda is a, a, an MP and a member of the Patriotic Front? Is it the reason why the rights of this particular journalist should be subservient to the rights of J.J. Banda? We as custodians and of the law in this country tend to think that no one is above the law. No one is above the law. You are aware of so many allegations that have been made against J.J. Bandit. And certain sections of this community or our community want to view that J.J. Bandit is being victimized. The answer is no. The answer is no. There are rights of certain individuals that have been violated. As I have indicated, we have a duty and responsibility 
to ensure that even those who are weak in society are protected. And that is all what we are doing. If my colleague, Honorable J.J. Banda, thinks that he is innocent, let the cause of the law fall, follow. But he has decided to escape from law of custody. What is he running away from? What is he running away from? For us, and all of you who are here, it is our duty and the responsibility that we should be seen to be protecting the weak in society. It is not correct. It is not correct to use the, the purported misfortune of J.J. Banda to tarnish the image of this government. It's not correct. We believe that what has been done is correct. J.J. Banda is face, facing the law as per provisions of uh, the current law in this country. If he thought his rights were being abused, he had the right to go to court, like he has done. He has sued the so-called <coughs> purported you know, abductors. He did. And nobody has stopped him from proceeding to court. I would like to call upon the law enforcement agencies in this country to ensure that they do everything possible by ensuring that we find Honorable J.J. Banda safe and alive. It is in the interest of all of us to find him wherever he is. We will appeal to the local security agencies and international agencies to ensure that there should be no safe haven for the fugitive J.J. Banda. We would like him to come back and remain in custody as we have always been wanting him to face the law. There is no one. There is no one above the law. And I also want to state that even those who had immunity in the past, they don't have immunity anymore. They don't have. Immunity ceased. If you do things which are inimical to this country, and if you break the law, you'll be answerable like any other. That is what the law says. So, for us, we have not just left this matter as it is, we have taken action against the officers who are supposed to be guarding J.J. Banda. Right now, as I'm speaking, these five officers are in custody. Investigations will follow. The due process will follow against these officers. The investigations are going on at an appropriate time. We'll brief you pertaining to the investigations surrounding this matter. I would like to thank you. I'm available for questions surrounding this matter. Thank you, Honorable Minister, sir, for the brief relating to Emmanuel J. Banda, MP. Uh, colleagues, the Honorable Minister is available for your interaction regarding the subject matter. Yes. Please, the two, and the, who have the first three set of questions. Yes, yes uh, I don't know if it is afternoon. Good, good morning. Yes, it's afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Masu from Kotio Yes. Yeah, mine is just to find out. From your statement, you did indicate that uh, before the unfortunate incident, uh, JJ was with the wife. So, is there any effort that you are, uh, you are making to make a follow-up possibly with the wife? Or maybe do you suspect a foul play on that particular issue? 
Well, I would say there was foul play in terms of the escape. I would not be in a position to say whether the wife assisted in uh, facilitating the escape. But investigations are going on. We are also interviewing the, the, the three wives as to what actually happened. Because they were there. They were there when this particular incident happened. So I would like to know what really transpired. We'll call upon them to assist with the investigations over this particular matter. Yeah, um, my name is Mangaya. I'm a journalist for the tone of the statement is very clear and straightforward. J.J. Banda was at no time mistreated while in prison. Meanwhile, a narrative was being brought <coughs> that he was uh, amputated, he was mistreated, this and that. But at the same time, there are some people that were tasked to look after J.J. Banda. Why didn't he, they come out in the open to clarify that what is being said is false until now? You may have noted, you may have noted that these malicious, malicious reports were circulated yesterday, few hours before JJ Banda escaped. The amputated person, I don't know where they photoshopped that person without a leg, the statement by the former president were being made yesterday. And we had no opportunity to respond to these malicious allegations. It's only now that I'm able to respond and state and inform the nation that JJ Banda was never amputated by any health facility in this country. You are journalists. You can go to Chipata General Hospital and check with the medical you know, personnel there and find out whether JJ's Banda's leg was amputated. They will tell you there was no amputation because there was no issue pertaining to his leg. The only problem he has is the issue of hernia, which he has had for a long, long time, even before he became a member of parliament. I also want to bring to your attention, honorable colleagues, you are journalists. Don't you remember and recall in 2021, prior to the elections, wherein J.J. Banda was feigning that he could not walk, that his limbs were failing him. And he was alleging that he was being tortured or he was beaten by the supporters of Dora Siri. During the campaigns, he was always on a wheelchair trying to seek sympathy from the electorate in Petau. That's what he was doing. Members of the public would do Please forgive me if I say that he likes feigning illnesses. Even in this case, some of these allegations are not true. They are being feigned just like he did in 2021. You can check. You will see J.J. Banda being wheeled around during the campaigns. When in actual fact, there was no injury on him. That's what transpired. So, for us, <coughs> as far as we are concerned, for any genuine illness which was afflicting JJ Banda, we are always there to attend to him. Like the time we took him to the hospital at Minasoko, we took him to the hospital in the Chipata, because we knew he had a problem of hernia. And that was the only problem we had to attend to. 
as far as we are concerned. That is the issue. The other issues are all false. Yes, colleagues, there. There is. Okay. Good morning, Minister. Lodi Kulipan from Zambia. Yes. Yes, Minister. Uh, I think uh, yes, the whole scenario sounds very interesting to the general public. Uh, five officers guarding one sick person, and then they escape through a window. A few minutes later, they want to recover the scene. Maybe they were using the speed of Usain Bolt. But uh, for me, my question is, what, uh, what's your comment on the, the seriousness on the, the, the part of the authorities to guard uh, a person who's uh, under lawful custody? Then immediately, I don't know how many minutes passed, immediately the wife leaves, they escape, they can not be found 24 hours now. And maybe do you buy into the narrative by some stakeholders that the system needs to be cleaned because it sounds so suspicious that uh, this sick person can be found <coughs> now when there are several officers guarding him. Thank you. Thank you. The question is very similar <coughs> to him. Maybe I could just yes, yes. Sorry, please. please. I also wanted to say from where you stand as government, what does it mean for a high level detained person like JJ Banda? to slip through the fingers of five officers in a very short space of time. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> that is the very reason why these officers are in custody. That's the very reason. Because we do not believe that professional officers who are not compromised would have allowed a situation as we are discussing now to have occurred. There is something more, and that's why we are investigating. That is why we are investigating. Who we'll get to the root of this problem? Who we'll get to the root? As I indicated, we are interviewing the, the wives and the officers so that they can tell us exactly what happened. Maybe the other mistake that was made was to treat J.J. Banda humanely. It was maybe a mistake. They should have changed him on the bed or any other post. But we thought that he's a human being. The officers thought that he is a person who deserves to be treated fairly. They did not change him. That could be another mistake. But definitely, definitely there's something more. When you analyze the statements that have been coming and what has happened and the conduct of the officers, you can tell that there's something more and we need to get to the bottom of that something more. Right now, the, the, the IG and uh, the Inspector, uh, no, Commissioner General of uh, Correctional Service, they are in Eastern Province. We will investigate this matter thoroughly. Yes, sir. We have one thing, another one, a set of two. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, my name is Sam Kiri. I've been following this case with keen interest, really. More especially that. Um, I want to find out from you, Honorable Minister. Uh, JJ Banda, uh, uh, before his alleged abduction, he used to be with him in Parliament. Yes. He used to go in and out of Parliament. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know um, that abduction seems to have triggered the arrest. What was uh, um, the security wing doing all that time before his abduction to bring the, this uh, uh, cases now? I don't know if you've got any right. Uh, just, just a follow-up also yes. <coughs> to his question. Um, Honorable Minister, my name is Darius John from Diamond TV. Yes. Not long ago, Honorable Minister, um, three police officers were arrested <coughs> for the alleged murder of IDA boss. Today, we are talking about five police officers 
detains um, in relation to the um, disappearance of Mr. JJ Banda. The members of the public are asking, are your police officers, you know, trusted, um, looking at what is happening now, that they are given these duties, but they are not um, performing their duties? Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I don't know if the Millennium Radio the question. I, I, I have two questions. So, can you allow me to first, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give okay. a comprehensive response to the issues. You are asking us as to why these cases are rising now. That's, that's the question you are raising. And then I will tag you on to the issue that has been uh, raised by my colleague from Demon TV. You may realize that this case of aggravated robbery took place before the 2021 elections. And you are aware that J.J. Banda at that time was untouchable. <coughs> was untouchable at that time. And because you have raised that issue, give me an opportunity to also highlight a number of cases that were committed by J.J. Banda, which cases were never taken up by the previous government. For those journalists who may recall, at Intercontinental Hotel, during the debate pertaining to Biltain, you journalists had to scamper. <coughs> Members of the public had to scamper. They were being beaten and abused by a ward of cadres led by J.J. Banda. Was there any action taken at that time? The answer is no. You recall, at the Central Police Station, J.J. Banda went with a horde of cadres. They beat the hell out of policemen there at Zambia Police, Central Police. What happened? He was given a, a case for a misdemeanor so that he can get away with it because he was being protected by the institution then. You recall what happened in Vuvi, in Vuvi, wherein they beat the hell out of one of the Post newspaper journalists, opened his mouth. J.J. Banda had to wee-wee in the mouth of your colleague. And what did they do? They gave him a very simple case. J.J. Banda was one of those who was in charge of the notorious Kamgodi here in Osaka. Maiming and beating people. That is J.J. Banda for you. But members of the public, they would report the misconduct of this particular individual. No action was being taken. Why? Because he was sitting in heaven. He was protected by the highest office in this country. In Petaoke. There was mayhem there in Petaoke during the, the 21 uh, election, nothing happened. But you see, what you have to bear in mind is that the law in this country states that there is no statute of limitation in criminal cases. You can be tried even after 100 years if you live more than 100 years. That's what the law says. And that is why those who were aggrieved by the conduct 
of JJ Banda are now rising and bringing the, these matters to attention. The, the post journalist, I, I tend to think some of you worked with that post journalist. You are aware he reported, but nothing happened because he was the right hand man of certain individuals in this country. There was impunity. But we are saying no more impunity. Coming to the issue that has been raised by Mr. Chonya, I, I hear what the public are saying. I hear what the public are saying. The public repose confidence in the Zambia Police Service and the other security wings of this country. They expect that the security wings should execute their duties diligently. I want to restate what I've always been saying. A number, the majority of our men and women in uniform are very professional, patriotic, and are dedicated to duty. But there are a few bad eggs. There are a few bad eggs. And if you check even the ones who were <coughs> guarding JJ Banda yesterday, they are almost the same age with those who were involved in the case of uh, Guntila Mule in telling that they were recruited at almost the same time. We are trying to do something about it. We are not proud, I'm not proud of some of the conducts of our men and women in uniform. It's not a secret that some of the, even the armed robberies that are taking place, some of them are being undertaken by our officers. That's the truth. We have a number of them in custody. It's unfortunate that men and women who are supposed to be protecting society can be involved in such vices. I hear you. I hear you. I have no doubt about it in my mind that there is something wrong, and that wrong must be corrected by ourselves. I repeat, the majority of the officers are professional and dedicated men and women who have made us proud. And that is why even over the Guntila case, those officers who are professional ended up arresting their colleagues because they are professional. But there are a few who have bad eggs in the system. <clears throat> it's like any other police service. You have heard even in America, in UK, officers are being arrested because of being rogue. It's the same here. But that's not an excuse. We have to clean up. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Kaluga Mosokoro. I don't have three questions now. <coughs> so, uh, you described J.J. Band as a fugitive. And I think some of us have watched movies before. And when you watch movies, when someone is a fugitive, indeed, some rights are taken away from them. How did the police officers allow the wife to convince them to say, we want privacy. This person needs privacy. How, how did that happen? And what does the law state in as far as that is concerned? Minister of Oath coming in. We, to, we are told to say JJ Banda uh, was apparently paralyzed. His legs he couldn't move. So now he managed to run away when his legs were paralyzed. I don't know what happened there. Maybe you can uh, respond to us. Apart from that, it seems like from your statement, there, there is a conversation around in the public to say, you seem to be against JJ Banda, and from your statement, it seems so. What do you make of that as well? Thank you. From the lady there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good 
My name is Sharon Kalimbo from uh, Times of Zambia. I've got two questions. One of them is uh, you mentioned that the wife was with him in the room, and when she went back to call the police officers, um, the man was nowhere to be seen. Don't you think she extremely at the hand in uh, the husband's disappearance? Secondly, um, I'm fully aware you directed um, with respect to confining the questions to this topic. But let me try anyway. Any updates on the IBA director investigations? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much. I will start with uh, your question. There is nothing we have against JJ Banner as an individual. But we have everything against J.J. Banda because of his criminality. That's what we are against. There is no way I can support J.J. Banda for having committed aggravated robbery against your colleague. I can't support you. There is a matter that is in court, in the Chipata High Court, pertaining to aggravated robbery. How can I support him? I can't. I can't support him for having beaten my officers. The officers are still angry. They are still complaining that the PF government had made the JJ Banda to get away from very serious offenses of beating police officers at a police station. Even at that time, even at that time, the issue would have been aggravated robbery. Check it. This money was grabbed from policemen at the police station there. Would you ask me whether I should support JJ Banda? The answer is no. I can't support him because of his conduct. As an individual, if he conducts himself well and so on, I have nothing. If it's you know his political statement. I have nothing against him. I have nothing against him. If it's, if it's the perception you are talking about, is some of you, is some of you, you know, the journalists who are peddling that perception? You are the ones who write. And you should realize always that whatever you write influences members of the public. A pain is mightier than the sword. You are the ones who write. If you write today that I'm against JJ Banda, those who are reading, they will, they will, they will think that it's correct. When in actual fact, I have nothing against it. What I'm against is the conduct. That's all. That is all. Anyone, anyone who abuses members of the public, I will be against them, because that is my duty and the responsibility. The issue of you know, the, those, you know, the, the policemen, I've already said it. I wouldn't want to say it more than what I've said. Investigations are going on. Those five policemen are now in custody and the investigations are going on. Why are they in custody? Because we believe that they misconducted themselves. They misconducted themselves. They should not have allowed what occurred that day, yesterday, to have occurred. If they were performing these, their duties professionally, it shouldn't have been allowed to happen like that. The issue of the wife, as I've said, we are investigating. We are going to talk to her so that she assists us with investigation pertaining to, to this matter. I have no doubt in my mind that even herself, oh, not just herself, even themselves, because they are men wives, even the, the three wives, they have an interest to ensure that they will find the husband. So they have a duty, not only to the police, but to the nation to assist and tell us exactly as to what transpired prior to the husband 
escaping from law of custody. And you have said whose leg was amputated, who was very sick, managed to escape. That is one of the issues. Why is the PF driving a narrative that JJ Banda's legs were amputated or leg was amputated when in actual fact it's not true? Why were they driving a narrative that he's very sick, he can't walk, he can't you know, assist himself? It's up to you to assume the intentions. Why they were drawing that narrative? In my view, the intention is to win, hoodwink the public so that sympathies with JJ Banda and their animosity goes to the government that were abusing the rights of JJ Banda when in actual fact we are not. Maybe there is a. Yes, sir. This is the last question for myself. Uh, do you, have you been briefed or do you have any idea how long it took for the wife or the wives? to submerge their husband in water, and if at all they were allowed with gadgets such as phones when they were attending to him, and maybe how long that process took, you have any idea? I will not be in a position to say that. Uh, as I indicated, investigations are going on. We'll brief you later. It will occurred last night, and my you know, senior mm -hmm. officials, the mm -hmm. Inspector General of Police and uh, the, the correct, the, uh, Commissioner General of the Correctional Service are now in Sparta together with other senior officers investigating this matter. We'll give you another briefing, but we thought that it's prudent for us to give you an update as to what has happened instead of uh, hearing these matters from social media. Um, can we have some Maybe there is a question. Or... Maybe I, I may have omitted your question. Madam, can you repeat? <coughs> An update on the IDA director investigations. Thank you. Although I had indicated that um, uh, that is a matter that will be discussed later. Obviously, we have we have made progress. Uh, five members, you know, uh, two members of uh, the Zambia Police Service have been arrested. One uh, officer who works for IBA is in our custody and the two members of the public. So we are still investigating. The other one is a, is a fugitive also. We are looking for him. I, th I hope that with the support of uh, Interpol, we'll be able to bring him to book. Obviously, you know, we have been conducting other investigations. Uh, at an appropriate time, I can assure you, we'll, we'll brief you over this part. Awesome. Thank you. Good afternoon, Honorable Minister. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Wilson Molinda from ZNBC. Um, mine is just a simple one. Um, uh, as you have indicated, uh, investigations are still ongoing. And um, I just want to find out uh, what will happen to the officers who are um, detained. Should it be established that um, they are actually involved in uh, the escape of Mr. Banda? Thank you. In some criminal acts who take appropriate measures. Also take note that escaping from law custody is a criminal offense on its own. So we will take, definitely take appropriate action against the officers if they are found wanting. But in the meantime, they are in custody and we are doing all the investigations to ensure that uh, you know, all the processes are done correctly. Yes, sir. I'll come back to you. Um, a follow-up, um, Honorable Minister, on the why falls with um, Mr. JJ Banda, um, or wives, as, um, <laughs> as it has been put, but I understand in your statement you did indicate that uh, one of them is um, the person who called the police officers yes. to come back. My question is, why hasn't um, that particular wife been arrested by the police as the first last suspect, and especially that she was the last contact, contact. of um, JJ Banda before he uh, allegedly escaped. Now, I wouldn't want to be presumptuous. Uh, you heard me say she's being interviewed. If she's found liable, she'll be arrested like any other person.
But for, for the time being, we are giving her a benefit of doubt. The police will investigate. If they think that she has done something wrong, the law will take its course. <clears throat> That's what I can say about the wife, this particular one. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, honorable, it is settled both local and international that uh, entering malicious falsehood on an issue which doesn't exist is actionable both in civil and criminal activities. Not long time ago, the former head of state indicated that J.J. Panda was a victim and warned that should anything happen to him, then the, his blood is going to fall on the on the head of state and the government in this particular in a state, it has turned out that whatever he said is actually doesn't exist as evidenced by the Panda's escape. So what action are we expecting to see from those people, including the former head of state, that have issued such possible making people to believe what doesn't exist. Thank you. Yes sir. Can we have one minute please? <laughs> the last two questions. Well, my, my last question was, uh, I think you didn't answer my question because uh, yes. uh, the Ministry of Health, can, uh, yes, the Ministry of Health uh, did they actually indicate to say indeed his legs were paralyzed before it, because it was an official statement from the government to say they were taken into the hospital because his legs were paralyzed. Did the medical officials confirm that? Thank you. I have never heard the Minister of Health indicating to the nation that J.J. Banda's legs were paralyzed. I challenge you to name the Ministry of Health official who issued that statement. As far as we are concerned, when J.J. Banda was in Minasoko Hospital, outside Minasoko <coughs> Hospital in our facility, and in Chipata, there has never been, there has never been any statement from the Minister of Health to state that J.J. Banda's legs were paralyzed. I challenge you now to tell the nation that the, the official who issued that statement had indicated that J.J. Banda's legs were paralyzed. I challenge you. Those are the statements which drives a totally wrong narrative to the public. I'm aware of the radio station and the other wings who have been peddling this narrative. And I know what you're going to write even tomorrow about what we are discussing. Please, as I said, the pain is mightier than the sword. Whatever you write yourselves, be careful. You can either build or destroy. I challenge you. Who and which health official said J.J. Banda was paralyzed? Yes, why was he then taken to the hospital? No, no. Not no, no. You, I'm, I'm asking you. No. I'm asking you. You are saying the Minister of Health said J.J. Banda's legs were paralyzed. I'm asking. I want to respond to you. J.J. Banda was taken to the hospital in Chipata because he has hernia. J.J. Banda has a hernia, a long history of hernia. And he was being given traditional medicine. Even here, Chief, the Chief, what is the name of the Chief? Mumbi, Chief Mumbi, came to see me, seeking authority to ensure that J.J. Banda is treated using traditional medicine because he has a history of hernia. And they said the only way to treat him was using traditional medicine. And I told him, my PSs are here, that as we are all Africans, even in the formal health facilities, they can still allow some of these you know, medicines. There's nothing that stops. And that is what I said. And if you see, there's a statement, <coughs> a, 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 an article that was written by one of your colleagues. They call it a you know, whistleblower. 
wherein they are saying that you know JJ Banda has a history of epilepsy. Those are diseases which he has had all along from childhood. And if it's tree, being tree, if it has to be treated according to them, they have to use traditional medicine. We have never said no. Because we are human beings. The challenge which I'm giving you is the issue of saying he was paralyzed, that's why he was taken to hospital. Please, let's desist from telling half-truths. He was taken to the hospital because of hernia, and he was operated on because of hernia on the 1st of August. And that's what I said. He has never been paralyzed. Never. Never. Yes, my guy. Well, on the issue of uh, Emmanuel Mwamba, he has always been malicious, <laughs> making weird and wild statements pertaining to the happenings in the country. I would like to advise my brother that he's a leader. He must be very careful with the things he says. You know, some of these statements can divide the country. It's not correct. It's not correct to suggest that the intention of those policemen was to, uh, to let him go so that they shoot him. No. Why didn't they shoot him? Why? They were armed. If they wanted to shoot him, they would have shot him. Any time. But the issue which I've said and um, I want to repeat is that the officers are also under scrutiny and investigation. If they are found wanting, appropriate measures will be taken. That's what I've said. On the issues of investigations, obviously this is a matter of national interest, public interest. We are going to ensure that the officers who are assigned to investigate this matter are professional. And we are not only going to use one wing of security agencies. All security agencies are involved in this matter. As I indicated, when someone is under custody, the, the institution that is responsible is Zambia Correctional Service. It entails that the Zambia Correctional Service will undertake their own investigations. Zambia police will also investigate the matter. In intelligence wings will also investigate the matter. So it's not an issue of one particular wing investigating. I have no doubt in my mind that the security wings will constitute teams to investigate this matter. <coughs> just like they investigated the matter of Kuntila. It was not just one security wing investigating the matter. Other security wings came and bought, you know, the security wings collaborate. And I have no doubt in my mind, in the same manner, they will investigate and will find. These days, there is no safe haven anywhere. Whether you want to go to Europe, we'll still find it. So, it's a matter of time. But I just want to mention here that there is no one above the law. If anyone in the course of this, these matters commits an offense, <coughs> will be held accountable. And you know very well that making statements that are inciting, 
alarming the nation, there are, there, there, there are consequences over it. So all those who are making these you know, statements should brace themselves for, for other measures that can be taken. But we are tolerant. That, I should say, we are tolerant. But there's a limit to tolerate it. One clarification. No, uh, no, no, let, 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 let him. Yes, let him yes. yes. From the, from the preliminary investigation, was the window broken during the escape? I'll, I'll give you further you know, uh, information over this matter. A detailed investigation report would definitely come. Thank you so much, colleagues, for your usual cooperation. We, we believe in you. You are our torchbearers in providing accurate information to the public. And I hope even in this situation, we will always be guarded not to make statements that are inimical or inflammatory over this matter. If there are issues, you can get to me and I can clarify outside the press briefing. Thank you so much, colleagues. Thank you, Honorable Minister, for the address and the large latitude of time we've offered to my colleagues to interact with you. I'm at your disposal. Thank you so much. Please, the press briefing has come to the close. Thank <laughs> you.